Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Today we're going to be talking about three players, one of which has signed a pre-contract at Chelsea Football Club. We know how things go in football. A pre-contract doesn't mean he's a Chelsea player. We're talking about RB Leipzig's Christopher Nkunku, a man that we spoke about in the summer, been a Chelsea target for a while, reportedly one of Bowley's top targets. We can talk a bit today about whether or not that means it's a Potter target or not. We're also going to talk about Arsenal's Gabriel Martinelli. Very good player. Some rough links coming out to do with Chelsea. And then I want to throw a third option in the works because Martinelli, Nkunku and said third option that I'm going to discuss all have similarities, I would say. Not necessarily the same players but certainly players with a profile that Chelsea may well be looking to invest in when it comes to age, when it comes to attacking, scoring goals. But before we get into anything, I do want to ask you to subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel. If you haven't already done so, we've got AC Milan tomorrow in the Champions League, which means Champions League match preview will be out in the morning. Six Things We Learn will be out tomorrow straight after the game. So... We begin, first of all, with the news that has been pretty big news over the last couple of days. I waited a little bit to discuss it. Obviously, six things we learned from the Palace game was released yesterday. I wanted to wait a little while before discussing the Christopher Nkunku signs a pre-contract at Chelsea deal so that I could understand a bit more about what Chelsea want to do with this because it's reported that there is a 60 million euro release clause that becomes active at the end of next June, which would mean with 60 million, we've seen it in the summer. I'm not going to say that Nkunku is on the same level as Erling Haaland because Erling Haaland is off the top of the camera scale right now in terms of just how good he is, but Manchester City got an absolute bargain. If Chelsea would have spent 120 million the year that we bought Lukaku, or I think it was 150 million that Dortmund wanted, it would have still been seen as a bargain because the man is just out of this flipping world when it comes to being a striker. Christopher Nkunku can play out on the left, can play as a number 10, which is where I do think he would come in at Chelsea. And I want to talk a bit about if this Nkunku deal goes through, who are the players who we might not anticipate being, well, I guess you could say worries in terms of their playing time with this Nkunku deal for Chelsea. But Nkunku is a special player. His stats over the last couple of seasons have been absolutely fantastic. He's only 24 years old and it is reported that he is a top target of Todd Bowley. Now, the way that Chelsea are trying to negotiate this deal is what makes this one interesting because Chelsea don't want to wait until clubs can activate the release clause next summer. In the process of this release clause becoming active, from January onwards next year, and potentially after the World Cup predominantly, there are going to be a lot of clubs looking at Christopher and Kunku as a cheap in the current footballing market option to come in and bolster attacks and to get players basically into your team who are going to score you goals and contribute assists. And Kunku, in my opinion, would probably come in and play on the left-hand side, which would mean that Raheem Sterling would more likely move in the middle, and then we'd see Mason Mount on the right. Potentially, if I was to pinpoint how Nkunku would immediately fit into this Chelsea team, but I think over the course of the next two transfer windows, maybe even in January as well, we will see a lot of players leave Chelsea. Hakim Ziyech is absolutely bound to go at some point. I think despite the good performance against Palace at the weekend, Christian Pulisic will be heavily demanding minutes in the lead-up to the World Cup, and then if he doesn't get them before the World Cup, then potentially Pulisic will be looking to leave in January. Chelsea want to get this deal done as soon as possible. The contract has been given to Nkunku, and Nkunku has said he is willing to accept the terms in which Chelsea have offered, but at the moment... Chelsea are trying to work out a payment structure so that we can do this deal now, not have to wait for the release clause, and then Christopher Nkunku would likely join at the beginning of next summer. There is a couple of positives behind this. The one, number one, 
is we can kind of eliminate by doing the deal soon we can eliminate some of the potential competitors that we would get in January's transfer window and when we move towards when that release clause is activated next summer. As well as that, Chelsea in the past, when we've done business early and when we know what players are coming in, managers have been able to have proper pre-seasons, which what we saw this year, even though the timings have still been a little bit screwed because of COVID, because of the World Cup and everything else, Tuchel wasn't given a proper pre-season. But at the same time, there also wasn't a proper pre-season with the signings that we made because we made so many of them late. If Christopher Nkunku comes in, this would be a marquee Chelsea signing. So to know from however long, however soon we can get this done, for Graham Potter to know that as soon as next season's pre-season begins, there is a marquee, potentially, well, class, first team player coming through the door, it does bode well. We've always performed better when our transfer windows have been executed early. It's also been reported by David Ornstein in recent days that if you thought the last window from Bowley's Chelsea was busy, then you haven't seen anything yet, which is obviously a great thing for me. There's also been comments from Joe Cole in recent days where he apparently spoke with the American owners in America in the summer and he said there's a lot of things that might need to change at Chelsea but the one thing that doesn't is the academy and I think what we can see with the constant talks with various different people for sporting directors roles at Chelsea the increased push to try and sign young players to build a squad that is not only young with the experience we already have in there but of course a squad that can grow together so that Chelsea can enable success within not only the short term but the medium and long term future too. Everything's boding well and seeing Chelsea doing this kind of work in between transfer windows whilst the season is already going, I think this is a good sign for upcoming windows and if people are worried about where is the money going to come from, are Chelsea going to remain under or within the FFP regulations, I think there will be a lot of players who end up leaving. And I said at the beginning of the video, there might well be someone who suffers here. And I want to put this one out there because at the moment, I'm torn between whether or not I think this is potentially realistic, but do I want it to happen? I don't think I do want it at this point. But if Nkunku was to come in and Chelsea were to keep developing the formation and we grow and we realise that there's actually more positives to playing something different under Graham Potter and Kunku could come in as a number 10 and Kai Havertz I think is really suited for a number 10 role but at Chelsea since he scored that winning goal in the Champions League we're just kind of waiting for smoke to come out of Kai Havertz and it hasn't happened so at the age he is at right now with the interest that would probably still be there for him because he still performs for Germany we saw what he did against England could Kai Havertz be someone who could make way next summer if Chelsea sign and Kunku. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. That isn't me saying I want that to happen at this point, it's not. But if Havertz has a poor season, Chelsea might be looking to cash in. And if we're spending on Nkunku, there are also rumours that there is a release clause for Gvardiol as well, the defender, which I thought it was pretty high, but I'm also seeing some reports that Chelsea might be able to get both Nkunku and Gvardiol for 100 million quid which for two players of that quality would be exceptional business. So I'm positive about that. Another piece of news that I'm interested in, simply because I do think he's a brilliant player, Gabriel Martinelli of Arsenal, Brazilian, he's only 21 years old, has been an absolute menace this season for Arsenal. He's been part of what has been a very successful, so far, Arsenal team. I know it's currently form that we're talking about. We're not talking about trophies and lasting success with what Arteta's doing this season at Arsenal. But Martinelli is an explosive player. He plays very well indeed. And I do think Chelsea being interested in Martinelli, as much as I think Arsenal would be incredibly reluctant to sell Martinelli to Chelsea, this is the kind of name that there's someone just ragging a bike around the car park. I apologise. To be linked with Martinelli is very exciting. And I think at the moment, there is a lot of talk about how close Chelsea might well be to agreeing this fee for Nkunku with Leipzig. The contract is no problem. Nkunku wants the Premier League move too. This one looks likely. So maybe, if that doesn't go through, that could be why we're seeing these Martinelli links. Because people know 
that Chelsea are working behind the scenes. I think it was reported by The Standard and also The Daily Mail in the UK. But at the moment, I don't think Martinelli would leave Arsenal. I don't think Martinelli would be sold by Arsenal to Chelsea with the way that Arteta is building this project. So there is a third player that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I do think could be an interesting signing. Martinelli is a bit out there right now. Nkunku, yes, Chelsea are working on this deal. It is reportedly Todd Bowley's number one man that he wants. Trossard from Brighton would be a Graham Potter signing, something that we, well, at least I believe, should be part of the notion, the motion going forward, let's say, from Bowley, Clear Lake Capital, to allow the manager that you've bought in for the long-term project to be able to pick players he wants to sign. Trossard, under Potter at Brighton, was a phenomenal player. Even now that Graham Potter's left, that man is scoring hat-tricks at Anfield, causing nothing but nuisance to Matip and Van Dijk at the weekend, scoring a hat-trick. Trossard, what would you guys say if Chelsea were to go in for Trossard this summer? I think he's a brilliant player. I think positionally, fantastic. His goals and his record is improving all the time. And it would be a player that Graham Potter would know exactly how to take him from Brighton, put him into his Chelsea. Want to leave you guys with that thought as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will, of course, be giving you more updates if and when there are updates to be given on this Christopher Nkunku deal. Positive signs, though. We are now in October. Transfer window doesn't open again until January. But for Chelsea to be doing this kind of work, I think we're in for an exciting future. Anyway, come on, you blues.